Well, here I am uh, at Cherubomba Wetlands and welcome to episode, episode seven of my weekly bird wrap. This week I've got three great stories for you. One about yellow throats in the US and why females select certain males. Another one about song sparrows also from the US. And the last story today is about buff-breasted button quails from Australia. So hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. My first story today is about yellowthroats. Now, yellowthroats are a wide ranging species across the United States. And we've always known that different races of yellowthroats have different features. The males have slightly more black, slightly more yellow in different parts of the plumage. And it varies across the United States. Why do, would birds do that? Why is this a feature that you would find in birds? What is it about the female that makes the male have these other features. In yellow throats in different places, sometimes they'll have a black mask. Uh, in other places, they'll have a yellow bib. The bib and mask will be brighter or less uh, bright in different places. What we've been able to do in the last five years is because of the, gen the advances in genetic studies, is we've been able to link the, the birds that are selected by the female based on the color that they prefer with attributes of the male that make them much more robust in terms of disease um, uh, resistance, etc. So the females are selecting males that are actually genetically superior and they're using the clue of the colour of the bib or the colour of the mask to give them that clue as to which one of the birds has that feature. Now what we don't know is why it varies across different parts of the, uh, uh, of, of the range of these birds. Why would it matter? Um, across the range and how is it that females know to select for these different features. These are stories that we still have to unravel. But it is interesting we can now prove that the males in this species have different colours which mean that the females have a clue as to which, of the, which birds have the best genetics for their young. My second story today is about the buff-breasted button quail of Northern Australia. This has been one of those enigmatic birds in the Australian ornithological history. It was last collected exactly a hundred years ago this year, 1922, and a specimen was found um, in Queensland. These button quails are a small bird that, uh, that live in the uh, grasslands. Um, they tend to be hard to see. When you approach them, they flush up um, like other quail do and you only get a very short glimpse of them before they then descend back into the vegetation. Another good clue is the calls that they have, and if you get to know the calls of a bird, sometimes you can tell the birds by their call in the grasslands without having to see them. But this buff-breasted button quail, last seen in 1922, we have no other information about it. And whilst occasionally people report it in different parts of the country, um, it's increasingly likely that what we're seeing is related species because all we're getting is a glimpse we don't know the calls well and even though there have been records since 1922 it's now thought that probably most of those records are misidentifications for other common painted quail species so there is this mystery at the moment around the buff-breasted button quail um, in Australia whether it still exists and how to find it and fortunately there is now some research being done to see if we can find any evidence that this bird has survived into the 2000s. My last story today is about song sparrows. Now song sparrows are a bird from the United States and as their name suggests they're very good at singing. In fact they have a very wide range of different calls. Some of them only last a few seconds and the whole song sequence can last over 30 minutes or more. What we've discovered just recently from some very laborious and tedious research work that's been done analysing and, di and dissecting out the calls is we can now see that the song sparrow can shuffle its repertoire around to try and maintain the interest of a female uh, song sparrow who might be listening to the call. So the male can do this series of calls over 30 minutes and then remember what the sequence was that he used earlier in the uh, song and then shuffle the order so that the female is hearing different uh, calls and different sequences of calls. Now this is this bit of research whilst it's 
been an amazingly difficult to do and it's um, the, the calls of these birds, as I said, are very short and to do the analysis has been very tricky. What we can now show is these birds have an amazing memory in terms of the patterns of calls that they do, not just the calls themselves. So the song sparrows turn out to be very much that, song sparrows who specialise in fabulous singing to appeal to the female and to keep her attention uh, during the breeding season. That story about the song sparrow is my last story for today. I hope you enjoyed the stories from uh, this, this week's episodes. If you did, check out my other stories on my YouTube channel, have a look at the website and um, see if there's some of the, the tours that I'm putting on over the next year or two are things that you'd like to participate in as well. So thanks for watching and uh, happy birding.